All right, so CRZ here. It is already supercharged. We're basically doing a supercharger fluid flush with a new filter. And then there's a couple of things he wants us to look at, but I don't see these cars in red very often. In fact, I don't see these cars at all. Uh, if you remember, we did the first K-Series in 2010, a white one, we called it a KRZ to distinguish it from a CRZ. But really nice in red. This is Milano red, by the way, which is the same color as we painted our last Integra build. Look how beautiful this car looks. A lot of Mugen parts on it, obviously. Mugen front bumper, Mugen wheels. That is the Mugen wing, if I remember rightly. It usually has a badge on it, right there. Definitely shows well in red. All right, let's get this in. Let's open the hood. We'll show you what it looks like. So this CRZ is supercharged. This is a kit that was offered through HPD. It uses a Rotrek supercharger, which is tight down by the crank pulley there. It is pushing through and obviously has a front mount intercooler. So this uses traction fluid, which is in this reservoir right here. That is what lubricates the supercharger. To do this correctly, you have to flush the old stuff through with new fluid. You gotta locate the filter, which on this car is down here. You're gonna replace that with a new one. It is a magnetic style filter. Then you're gonna flush the fluid through until it comes to be a nice clean blue, kind of looks like the color of Gatorade. Let's go ahead and show you. So you're gonna do the start and stop in. So when we give you the signal, you start it. And when we give you one of these signals, stop it. All right? Got it. Cool. Plan now is you're basically flushing this fluid through and as it flushes, the dirty fluid is going to come out here. This would be the return. This would be recirculating back into the reservoir. But what we're doing is flushing this into here. We can also have a visual and we can see when the fluid gets a nice clean blue. It looks kind of like a Gatorade blue when it's clean. Usually takes two bottles. Hopefully we've got enough here, but we're going to flush it. It'll probably take three or four of these changes before you see it come nice and clean. Testing out our new light right here. All right, go ahead. Good job. So if you can hold it around 2,000, 2,500. S2000 CR. If you've never seen one of these before, they obviously have quite a few extra differences. Makes them special. Well, this one is here for a clutch checkup. The clutch has been done at another shop and to be honest, feels awful. I drove it from that spot there to here 
and it felt absolutely terrible. A couple of other little things he just wants us to look at. This is pretty common in S2000s. Uh, dipstick flips up every time he drives it. You can f usually goes that way. You can flip them around here, which makes them a little bit tighter. But what happens is these O-rings basically get flattened out. Uh, I don't have a part number for those, and Honda don't sell those separately. So I want to see if I have a new dipstick. Dipsticks are like 22 bucks, but uh, if I can come up with a part number for those O-rings, it's something we will offer. Also has a axle click, which is pretty common. Uh, what we do is take the wheels off, remove the axle nuts, clean everything, and use a high temp anti-seize grease and retorque them. Usually takes care of that clicking. But let's get the clutch out. We'll show you what it looks like, because if it feels, if it looks as bad as it feels, it's pretty darn rough. Just took the shifter out. It doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna clean and re-grease it. They mentioned the replace these parts. It might have damaged the shift ball putting it in. We're showing you this so many times. This is the foam isolator right here. And its whole purpose is just to make the interior a little bit quieter. Stop some of that transmission noise echoing through the car. And as, he, as you see, it's falling apart. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and we're gonna replace it with a nice new one. Again, it's just a little small change, but it does make a difference once you feel kind of the before and after. It does quieten it down a little bit. Uh, this was actually in good shape. That didn't damage this, so we can reuse this. It wasn't clipped down all the way, but that's just one of those things. At least it didn't get broken. So this clutch was put in 3,000 miles ago, and this was one of the things that we kind of suspected. There was no grease on there. Uh, it is an FX400, which is a little harsh. Um, 400 means it'll hold 400 foot-pounds of torque. One of the reasons we prefer the FX300 is it's got the least compromise, we think. This one's just a little harsh. And then between not being able to monitor the pedal very well, because it's either press the clutch down or release the clutch, makes it even worse. So it was a Nachi bearing, but of course being really, really dry, you can even see in there. This has to have grease to slide, like we've mentioned so many times in the past. And this is really, really hot spotted. You see where it's just being grabbing and chattering. Once this starts, it's like you can't get rid of it. Once you start that chatter, once it gets heavy, it won't fix itself. It just gets worse and worse. You get more heat in it. And like I mentioned, these puck clutches, they will hold more power, but they're difficult to drive, difficult to, when I say meter the clutch, meaning that nice, progression where it starts to engage and you keep lifting it and you can get more and more engagement these are more like an on off so it's not really it's not a fun clutch to use another reason why we don't want to build high high horsepower cars it just makes the cars annoying to drive over time sim matching hotspots on the flywheel we had an already surfaced flywheel so we just changed that out we'll send this out to get surfaced but that was it fx 400 uh, I do like FX300 uh, clutches, I do like Clutch Masters, just not a big fan of the 400s. It did have a Nachi bearing, but part of us doing it, it does get a new one. And of course, all the rest are new related parts. The rubber boot is something that gets overlooked. This flange here is what actually clips into the transmission and the slave cylinder is through here. What happens is as they get old, the rubber is kind of dry rotted and they pop out. Sometimes they're just cracked completely. The whole reason of this is to keep the transmission clean, especially, imagine driving through a monster puddle. You don't want that water getting blasted into the transmission. So these are nice and pliable when they're new. The shifter here, he said that he did a rebuild on it and he noticed that the ball felt like it cracked, which it did, you see right there. And that's what happens when it's cold or even room temperature will crack i always re recommend you put it in hot water uh, get it really hot don't boil the water but get it close to boiling and let that thing sit in there for a while it makes it more pliable then grease it and put it in there is the part number to the ball right there uh, this is already greased but i want to go ahead and put another coat of grease on there look at how well this is packaged look at this esther they yeah. shipped them just like that. Just like this? In no this tape, box? no separate box. Just that's it. I ordered two filters, two filters in a box. I'm just amazed that they made it. Right. Check it 
guess they figured the little gray truck was good enough. Yeah, they go, well, you're probably not gonna lose it. Yeah, I mean, look, it's like about to rip. Yeah, but just the fact that these were holding together. All right, so we're gonna put a new air filter in our vacuum, which I've cleaned many times, never replaced it, so the vacuum is gonna love this. Look at this poor vacuum dealing with this filter. Of course, we do a lot of metal and recently that fiberglass from doing the mufflers, but look how yucky that is. So you want to do it? All right, this is like rubbery. It just kind of pries off over here. This comes up there, that pin stays on the vacuum. It's super dirty, so once you get this thing off, go wash your hands before you put the new one on. Yeah. But this basically pries up from the bottom. You see how it moves there? Yeah, and you just pry it up from Yeah, you just end. pry that over that. Just like I say, you'll end up with all this all over the floor when you're done, so you'd have to test the vacuum and clean up after it. This is actually better than most, but as you see, it's not really spongy anymore. You squish it and it doesn't bounce back. This is what the new ones look like. And again, it's just for sound. If you've driven an S2000, you know they're noisy, so everything you can do to make them quieter is definitely a plus. All right, you want to put it back together and dyno test it? Yes. <laughs> do you know you dyno test a vacuum? Um, paper? Just find anything you can to suck. Stick this in uh, every crevice you can find. You gotta get that cable out of there, guy. Oh, yeah. Didn't gonna jam that cable in there. <laughs> no. Nope. This will only line up. Um, no, it looks like it goes the other way around. Flip that. Yep. There. It should just line up. Just replaced this with another used one that we had that the O rings are a little bit better. That's something that once we find the exact size of the O ring, I think we might start carrying those, but that should fix that problem. It really needs either a filter on there or a hose going here. We'll mention that to him, so if he wants to do it. This looks like an aftermarket throttle body, so I'm not gonna really get too much involved in this part. It did want an oil change, we just did fresh oil change with a new filter. This is something that I've demonstrated so many times before. Two fingers, you can actually operate the clutch. And it's nice and smooth it doesn't have any harshness to it now everything is fresh and clean and greased that clutch will feel like a million bucks clutches we're just letting the wheels turn making this leap get some uh do you have footage of the car from the outside with the wheels turning yeah you do let me insert his video right here ready uh friction on the clutch but not a lot of heat there's no load on it just the weight of the wheels it's just giving it a really really basic preliminary break in before we drive it it's super duper overkill but the more you can use the clutch and keep heat out of it, the better the clutch will break and you'll have less chance of the hot spots. So that's pretty much everything on his list. So I didn't talk about that, the axle click. Actually, I did talk about it. So that is done. Oil change, we did the trans with Royal Purple. Uh, didn't change his O-rings, just put him a better stick in there. It was one we had, so I'm not gonna charge him for that. Just basically swap him out. And when we come up with an O-ring solution, we'll change all of ours and that will some, uh, be something we offer. That's pretty much it with this one. We're going to road test it and just make sure, but this should be a massive difference for him. The clutch is going to feel so much nicer to drive. It's going to be way more enjoyable now. So I just checked in with a customer, car feels great, he's happy with it. So coming up on upcoming videos, there is going to be a S2000 that came a long way for a full spoon clutch and flywheel kit, springs, retainers, keepers, fluid changes, and more. See you in the next video. Don't forget, enjoy your car.